It's the Funky Wear Pig, Casey Lansdale, annual holiday special. Starring Casey Lansdale. What, what? Your Wear Pig, G Dog Be Swole. All the way from England, Lee Go Boy Hartnup. That's a turkey on his head. And that holiday favorite, the apathetic boy child choir. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. Legally have to ask, Casey, are you being held against your will? Welcome to Blunder Pencil, party you can join at home. Come along and bring your friends, here the party never ends. Welcome to the No Pencil, never have to feel alone. Go ahead and shake your butt, no one here will give a fuck. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the No Pencil, welcome to the No Pencil, welcome to the No Pencil, welcome to the No Pencil. Hey, but hey, howdy and heroic. It's me, your funky wear pig, here live in the No Pants Zone studios. Throw those pants in the air like you just don't care. Uh, I love this time of year. It's so festive. And a main reason why we get to do our second, second Casey Lansdale holiday special. Yeah, spoiler alert, Casey Lansdale is here. Uh, means we have to get everything in place. I got the comfy shirt on. I have Boy Child 1.0 right over here, pedaling away to power the Commodore 64. And over here we have um, Boy Child 2.0 doing what he do. All the supplies are there. We have some special announcements to make, some surprises. And uh, I got moon pies. I got moon pies. Uh, you know, as a good Catholic boy, I like to bring them to a midnight mass with me. And as I scan around, if I see someone dozing off, I like to just pop them in the back of the head. You know, don't you, don't you fall asleep on the baby Jesus. Always watching. But first, I got to put a spotlight on our fans, our way too generous fans for all the presents they've been sending in, like this one. Look, I got a globe. I got a globe from my BFF. And I said, is it because I like to spin things? Or is it because I like to take my crayons and draw little sea monsters in? And she said, no, if you put a globe on your desk, you might look smarter. So, so yeah, I got that from my uh, former BFF. Everyone knows I love my books, and I was sent this, The Legacy of the God series by Michael West. The whole thing, the whole thing. I cannot wait to dive into this. Michael, when it comes to dark fantasy, is so much fun to read, and he's trendsetting beyond belief. Not many people know this. This is not a series. This is actually a four-part trilogy. Who does that? And, of course, anyone who watches the show or follows us on Facebook, knows the holidays don't come through without bringing the terror that is Maggie Renee and her presence. Do you, do you want to see what Maggie got me this year? And as I mentioned, uh, our guest tonight is Casey Lansdale, because you can't have a Casey Lansdale holiday special without a Casey Lansdale. And we have the Casey Lansdale, and she's bringing it. Oh, she's bringing it all. Uh, actor, writer, performer, singer, songwriter, and, and we get to do a duet together. We do a duet. I have been practicing for months, and... It's, it's not only going to be the highlight of the show, but it's going to be the highlight of my life. I mean, the only, oh, the only thing that can make it better. Could you imagine if she brings an auto harp 
like does an auto harp while we're doing our duet. <sighs> that would be the dream. This morning coffee is going to be actually a special announcement. Uh, a decade ago, the Funky Wear Pig was a radio show on the TMV Cafe. And um, Casey and I were talking about the fact that it's been a rough year. It's been a weird year. And we were wondering if we could do anything extra. Well, obviously, we're doing this show. And we thought, what if we added one more? So I am proud to tell everybody that we are going old school. And the Funky Wear Pig Radio Show is back. Uh, it's going to be coming out on Christmas Day and running all throughout the weekend. Me, Casey, the whole group uh, uh, gathered up again. And uh, the only glitch we had was that um, we wanted the owner of the TMV Cafe, E.W. Bradfute, to share in this with us. And uh, he approved everything, but he kind of has a secret identity. Everybody knows him as the radio dude, um, uh, but he's uh, he has an alias. Well, I'm very pleased to say that we were able to get both E.W. and his alias to join us for Morning Coffee. Those in the FYI, as the kids today say, uh, also know E.W. Bradfute, mastermind behind the TMV Cafe, as Pastor Edward. And I got to give a quick kudos to you because I know you got to get back on the clock. Um, Pastor Edward uh, uh, was lucky enough to slip in and do the morning coffee with us after we made this big decision, which I can't always make because I'm too busy thinking to be thinking. And uh, uh, he said, we can do this, this, and this. Just get it to me. I talked to Casey. We put it all together. Pow, bam. We've got the first Funky Wear Pig appearance on a radio show in a decade. Uh, uh, and we are so excited about it going old school. Uh, you know what I would love to do, if it's up to you, a Christmas special every year? Hmm. That wouldn't oh, be bad. That oh, wouldn't be bad. We could do that. We could do that. I already have one person I'm negotiating with for Christmas, so I have to, I have to pass it by her. But uh, there are many other holidays. I love yeah. Halloween. We could do Halloween. Ooh, we, yeah. we, could, we could kick off the whole Funky Wear Pig season every year in September and roll right over. And, and oh, there's so many things we could do. Ooh, but it popular. starts It starts this Christmas. I feel like I'm already opening Christmas presents right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you keep doing the good work that you do. Uh, uh, I know you have been busy and, I, and we're joking around and everything, but you've been out there in, in all seriousness, feeding the hungry, working yeah. with different uh, uh, churches, getting things out there for the people just to make sure that their holidays are a little bit better. And, and I, and I definitely want to thank you for that because that's amazing work, my friend. Thank you. It's, it's a, it's a, I, I don't want to say like time consuming, making people think it's a bad thing, but uh, it is, it does take a lot of time. It does take a lot of effort and a lot of work. And so people who do that, they have to be dedicated to do that. And I'll tell you what, uh, you know, you might feel tired afterwards and stuff, but that's just a physical response. Emotionally, man, you feel great for what you're doing. You know, you're, you're seeing people that, you know, like uh, yesterday we delivered food to a lady who's a, a mother of 10, 10 children. They're all hers. <laughs> They're not adopted. <laughs> but we delivered a car load of food to her. And it, it just was great to see that these people are going to have food for Christmas and they're going to just really enjoy. And so doing these kind of things, they, they're rewarding to you emotionally and, and, and spiritually in a sense, because, you know, you feel great for what you're doing. So well, when you're doing the work, there is no time clock. That's true. So That's true. thank you for all you do. And, and uh, thanks for uh, letting a bunch, a bunch of misfits like us come back to the TMV Cafe Radio to relive some good old times.
I, I know the truth though. You're sneaking in so you uh, you can give the code to the Bong brothers. I know those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've changed all the locks since I was last there. So I got to do a recon thing. We're doing right. a Christmas show. Right. <laughs> all right, EW. Love you much, Lee brother. And uh, thanks so much for popping in. I know you got to get back out there and, and do what you do. And we're all yeah. thankful for it. So happy holidays to you, my friend. All right. God bless. <laughs>With flawless continuity, there he is, like a guardian angel who's not afraid to go on vacation because he trusts you. Live, via satellite, through Zoom, our own musical director, J.J. Glamour. J.J., how are you, good sir? Ah, I hope you're Grubhub and not my Tinder date. I think I speak for everybody when I say either one would be a dream come true. JJ, I know we speak constantly, but I haven't caught up with you for the past couple of days. Anything groovy going on? Oh, last night I was listening to a song and the woman hit a high note. And I thought, that sounds like a monkey. But then I thought, no, a dolphin. But then I thought, what if it was both? Singing together. No. One voice from a smooth, aquatic monkey. A dolphin monkey? Think of the dominance in both the oceans and the jungles. Simian power combined with the genius of a dolphin. You want to fight a monkey with a blowhole? So I'm sure you have a fabulous song to kick us into the holiday comedy break with the Magic Farmers Incorporated. How about we do that? Here's a holiday song I actually sing at church. It's called Touch My Figgy Pudding and You Die. thought of that you all right you get a raise that but then you don't get a christmas bonus so i mean it's good and it's bad behold the magic farmers incorporated speak moo cow speak you're not the boss of me there are things in this world that cannot be explained things only akin to the supernatural. I'm Grody Wales, star of A Bad Dream on Oak Street and Devil Monkeys 5 through 9, and I'm going to take you on a journey you cannot turn back from. Being the season, let us begin with one of the oldest legends of holiday horror, the Krampus. But for our Scott McJoy, there was no legend only hard reality. But if you see Santa's evil counterpart, those in the know say he likes to enjoy a bit of schnapps. My suggestion is to offer him a swig. Last Christmas, I locked up the entire house doors, windows, I checked the entire perimeter. Krampus came out of nowhere. He just appeared. Six foot eight, huge horns, fangs. He threw me in a bag and beat me with birch branches. Then suddenly, he runs off and I screamed out, Hey, where are you going? The woods can be a terrifying place, trees. But for two brothers, Clem and little bra Beckley, they went looking for and found an ancient entity only spoken of in whispers and Richard Gere movies. 
Is it an interdimensional alien with mastery over space and time? Or is it an ancient harbinger of death? I think it's best if I let the Beckley brothers explain. Knowing it was Christmas, we went to Point Pleasant in Ohio. In December 1967, one of their bridges collapsed, and in months before, hundreds of witnesses reported a large bird-like creature with burning red eyes. A Mothman. The what? Mothman. Say it again. Mothman. The Mothman. That's what I said. Yeah, you're right. I'll never forget, we went out there like 8, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. Witnesses who've seen the Mothman said their eyes got burnt up all bloodshot. Like it was radioactive. I really want to fiddle a little, really want to fiddle a little. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so we went outside of town to the old World War II munitions area called the TNT area. And we synced it. It flew right at us like a pissed off pigeon. Now that you mention it, it did kind of look exactly like a pissed off pigeon. And you know, we was too busy running and screaming and doing a whole lot of this. How would a tiny ass pigeon bring down a big ass bridge? No, you're right, you're right. How indeed. That's just the kind of logic you can't argue with. There's only one answer. It's because this shit be haunted. Fact. Columbus Day, 1966. Blessing, Pennsylvania. Three-year-old ugly Joe Barrett murdered his family, then disappeared. Fact. Machete, chainsaw, improper insertion of a tire pump. Death arrives wearing the true mask of evil. For over 50 years, horrifying unsolved murders have been filed under Ugly Joe. A serial killer who leaves behind only crayon drawings. Really, really good crayon drawings. I mean, check out that parrot. Probably like the best crayon parrot ever. Fact. In order to survive, you need the facts. Is it politically correct to die on Columbus Day? Can your virginity save you? Can you really stick a man up on a wall with a kitchen knife? The legend of Ugly Joe is your only hope in solving all the mysteries. Recreel Halls, The Legend of Ugly Joe is available at Amazon Books. Oh. This voice is scary. Happy Holidays! I'm Sharon from I Smell Sheep, and this month we're doing something a little different. I'm reviewing Lunar Room from Vault Comics. Magic tech gangsters and one very tired werewolf. Lunar Room, issue one, written by Danny Lore, artist Gio Posito from Vault Comics. Cynthia Sinbreaker used to be a lot of things. A werewolf, a mob enforcer for a powerful mage, a name feared on every street of Solar City, but now she's forcibly retired from all those things trying to get over her past job and past loves. Oh boy, this one's a banger. Lunar Room 1 is what I look for in a graphic novel. It fits into my favorite book genre, urban fantasy. You get world building, kick-ass characters, a little romance, snarky humor, and lots of action. Sin was the muscle for a mafia boss, uh, a mage. And as for yet unknown reasons, her werewolf has been bound. So she's basically human and angry and devastated. And I have a girl crush. There's also a mage who enters the scene who's a troublemaker for his kind. And by the end of issue one, the two have met and asses have been kicked. I love the artwork. It's in a popular style you'll find on webtoons, which gives it a more urban fantasy fiction genre feel. This one's a lot of fun with layered characters we can watch grow as they decide what's important and how far they will go to give it. 
I give Luna Room five sheep. We'll see you guys next month. Check out the award-winning review site for books, comics, and movies. Your funky wear pig loves ismellsheep.com. Did you know that worms can mate with themselves? See, don't give up hope. Hi, I'm JJ Glamour, music director of the Funky Wear Pig and former child star of the hit sitcom Grandma Groovy Pants. This isn't water, Grandma. A famous catchphrase can keep a career going through the lean years. I'm here with exciting news, you glamour heads. I'm proud to announce we're re-releasing one of my most iconic albums, my famous live prison concert, JJ Glamour in the Slammer, now digitally remastered and audio enhanced. I'll never forget it. Early May, 1968, the debut of my most trend-setting album, Two days after Johnny Cash at Folsom Prison. Fun fact, my timing sucks. But that didn't stop my fans from buying dozens of copies. And now, more than <clears throat> decades later, you can experience JJ Glamour in the Slammer as never before. All the huge hits are here. Robert Up Dub. Working in the laundry, rub it up, dub. My life's a waste, rub it up, dub. Working in the laundry, someone spring me out of this place. <laughs> he was six foot two with a big red hat. He wore funny shoes. So I said, who the heck is that? So I killed him. Hey, didn't I see you stabbing somebody in the exercise yard? I'm kidding. <laughs> Almost had ya. I got framed, 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 I got framed. How about you? Hey, you two, get a room. Oh, you already got one. Hey, you, don't be shy. Come on and look me in the eye. I know it sounds funny, but I'd like to be your honey. Let's be friends tonight. Hey, you with the muscle shirt. Give me something, you little flirt. Don't be a baddie, I'll be your sugar daddy. Let's be friends tonight. I got cigarettes, let's be friends tonight. sweeter than toilet wine. I made so many new friends that day. No need to break a window. Here's the key to my house. But seriously, if you missed my classic live album last time around, here's your chance to go to prison with me, JJ Glamour. Re-released and digitally remastered, J.J. Glamour and the Slammer. Now available at Walmart, Walgreens, Wally World, and Winky Dinky Dog. Still banned in Belgium, don't ask. What are you waiting for? Just plead guilty. Subscribe to the Funky Wear Pig and let the laughter and the music drop right into your hands. It's getting cold outside, and that's the magical time of year when friends and family gather together around the fire. If you don't have a fireplace, a coffee table lights up just fine.
Yeah, this is a this is some class A stuff. Uh, uh, not only have we gone to great expense to build these studios, the No Pants Zone studios, but we supplied you with the guy with the cue cards, and you were doing perfect. No one can tell at all that you're reading off. Thank you. Shit. You know, my eyes are a little shifty, but um, other than that, it's it's like uh, it's like I have it all memorized. So we should be uh, for clear transparency. Let's just say this. Uh, you and Jonathan just bought a new house. And the first thing you did, because, you know, uh, was you immediately invited your family out for the holidays. So it's, it's your dad, your mom, brother, grandmother. Yeah. Jonathan's people are coming out. And then because you give, you give constantly to the fans. Uh, you also have staying at your house. 15 lucky raffle winners who went to CaseyLansdale.com, entered a contest and won the chance to spend the holidays with you. So they're, they're also there. It is a party. It is, it is, as I mentioned, snug. <laughs> that, that's, that's a good word. That keeps that's, you cozy. You know, it's like, that's it's, a, to... it's, a good, it's a good word for the, the cold weather. And when I say cold, I mean, California cold, not Pennsylvania cold. Yeah. <laughs> and smug, uh, snug is just a much easier uh, word than claustrophobic. Right. That's, that's a lot of syllables coming it's at more you. more gentle. It's more gentle. That's right. So the uh, just do us a favor because viewers might see things during the show. Just if you would, as, as people come in and out of the picture or make their way to the fridge or whatever, uh, just take the time to point out family raffle winner. Right. Okay. So well, we I do have a long mentioned. stick to like keep them at bay. So if anybody gets the game, <laughs> just gonna start poking. <clears throat> Get out Taser. of my shot. I don't share the shot. <laughs> my camera i only work in soft light get out of my shop and again we've worked it out it took months but we figured out uh how to phrase the show uh where the key is putting the word annual in the right place because if we do annual funky wear pig casey lansdale holiday special you're locked in right you, you, you have to show up every year but if we move annual before the word holiday funky wear pig casey lansdale annual holiday special the holiday is annual and yeah, that's, safe. No, that's, that's, that's not our pay grade. No, no, no. That's safe. That's a safer bet. I mean, my intention is to be here from now until the end of holiday times, but just in case I like the caveat. Every, every Christmas special, every holiday special that I've ever seen throughout the decades, one of the key moments of it is the duet is the duet that the the host gets to do with the guest uh, <clears throat> and uh that's just one of two dreams i i have uh, the other one? <laughs> quick tell me the other one. <laughs> <laughs> um but i have been informed i have been informed duet ain't happening uh, uh happening. you know you have things you have things that you've done recently, things that are coming up that you um, uh, you got to save the got to save the throat. So, uh, yeah. uh, funky wear pig, don't get none. Put a pin in it. You know, it's I've I've just finished my annual bout of bronchitis, which is it's always fun to have bronchitis in the middle of a global pandemic. So uh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I have to apologize. Uh, sorry, I'm sick. By the way, yeah. this is this is yeah. not the Rona. You'll be you'll be fine. Just it's uh it's its own thing. So I'm just on the end of that, but I am excited because I was able to record at least one new little Christmas song. Mm -hmm. um, it was it's a cover. It's a Joni Mitchell song, uh, "River." Mm -hmm. And my partner and I, Alexander Rodriguez, we are doing. We're actually not even going to perform that one. We just wanted to kind of put something out. So. I recorded my part and then he recorded, I'm, I'm pointing at my studio, but you can't see it, but there's a studio over here. I recorded my part in the invisible studio and then um, he did his and we had a friend of ours kind of um, master it and mix it. But uh, we're actually going to do a whole concert series called Unsung Midler. Yes. So it should be the covers that Bette Midler did. So we will throw in a few of her well-known songs, but what we're really wanting to hit are the songs that people don't think of as Bette Midler songs but songs that she loved and that she did. And it just so happened that she announced her retirement from touring. And it's a very different kind of gig than I normally do. I, I won't be doing any of my own songs at this particular gig, 
this is more a cabaret style. Yeah, I was going to say this is because you you have your certain genres that you've done. Right. And I know you you moved recently into uh, uh, last time we were talking, you were moving into like a big band swing kind of uh, 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 um, 40s, 40s style. Yeah, I kinda, you know, I keep trying to and I keep having this discussion here. I keep trying to find the genre to peg it. And, and I keep landing on jazz, but I know that's not right. But I'm I'm talking about like Etta James, sort of Amy Winehouse. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, there's. It depends on who you're asking, because for some people that could be R&B, for some people that could be more Motown, for some people that could be more blues. You know, it, it, it just kind of depends on what you uh, tend to, what you tend to lean to. So at this stage, I'm just going to say jazz or big band might kind of work, but it's it's a little bit of a misnomer because we won't always have horns and a big band there. Right. So if I advertise it that, and then you show up and it's um, a piano. Yeah, and, one and guy with an piano, oboe. Yeah, and... <laughs> it's, it's going to be a letdown. So we're still trying to kind of pinpoint what it is. But this particular event that we're doing in January is story and song. And that's kind of just what we're calling it. It's Bette Midler, Unsung, Story and Song, Casey Lansdale, Alexander Rodriguez. And uh, he's actually a friend of mine that I met because he has a radio show. And I was a guest on his radio show. Oh, and then we started talking sort of like this and then, and look what happened. Now we're singing and doing gigs and duets together. So hold out hope, Greg, it could still happen. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Uh, Cause I, I've heard Alexander and I, I know his, his clout. How many times did you have to be on his show before you guys not only sing together, but did a whole, the whole I, concert gig. How many times? I gotta tell you, I've been on his show a lot. He's, he's actually one of my favorite hosts and we've had a lot of fun. I've been on his radio show. I was on his television show and we just hit it off. And we've been talking about doing this kind of thing for about two years, right before pandemic hit. Okay. And then of course that was not the time to be booking gigs, but it was the time to kind of be talking about what we wanted to do, how we wanted to shape it. Cause it originally started as sort of a Dolly and Elvis combination. But then which that, one were you? Uh, it, it didn't matter. Wow. It didn't matter that we were both going to cover songs, which was kind of the, the kitsch of it. So it was just it, it wasn't going to be like a, a, a dress. There were there weren't going to be costumes. Right. It wasn't going to be any of that. But it was just going to be that we both cover those songs. But then as we kind of got to talking to people, it felt like a Vegas act more than it did uh, a story and song act, which is what we kind of wanted to do. We want to sit around. We want to tell stories. We want to talk about our friendship. We want to sing. We just want to have a good time. And uh, so it sort of evolved from a Vegas Dolly and Elvis vibe to sort of this songwriter, you know, right close to the audience sort of in, um, intimate evening. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I don't know if it'll be an ongoing series, but you never know. We'll kind of see how people respond. And if people are into it, then we'll it could be a on. nationwide tour. It could take off. You, don't yeah, know. you never know. I, I'm open to all the things. Are you excited to be performing live again? It's been a while. It's been a while. I know yeah. you did one like mm-hmm. a summer ago. And mm-hmm. that was that was during the, the chaos. But that was yeah. the first time in a while for that one, right? I had a gig in August, which was the first one, first live gig in a month and a half or in a year and a half. Excuse me. I wish it was a month and a half. Um, so that was August. And that was great. It was an outdoor venue. It was a theater. And they, they were very mindful, took care of everything. But then kind of right after that, everything... Um, backed up again and then the holidays moving forward people were a little um, cautious to book as we move forward so I am looking forward to it I'm not usually nervous I was extremely nervous for that gig because after a year and a half of not performing you're kind of you just don't know you know it's a it, it's a muscle and if you're not working that muscle just like when you're lifting weights you're not building that strength so didn't know how it's going to turn out it turned out to be amazing it was so fun and everybody, there was just such a vibe in the air of, of gratitude for performers because nobody had done anything. I yeah. had so many people come up after and say, this is the first thing I've done in a year and a half in public. And yeah. it was powerful, you know, cause you're, cause not only I understand I'm in the same boat, but you kind of think like, well, thanks for making this be the thing, you know? So you want it to be not only great as always, but you want it to be w- worth the fact that everybody put on their 
um, their clothes and ventured out of the house, you know? So this is kind of that same vibe that there are a lot of restrictions that make the January gig feel safer for me as a performer. I'm just spitting all over everybody in the front row. So but that's um, one of your highlights. You're kind it, of like it, the, the Gallagher watermelon squishing. That's right. Of, it, it's of, of the singers. People, it's that's what so they interactive. Really up for. You know, it's, it's like blue man group. You know, we just paint <laughs> everywhere except for spit everywhere. So I I'm looking forward to it. And Alexander has been doing a lot of events. He's been hosting. Uh, so he goes to Palm Springs, which is where our gig is a lot and does a lot of hosting events. He's, I guess, known as a personality is what they call it. Yeah. So he's, he's been in, in the wild, in the field and, uh, has had so much fun. So this feels just like the right time to kind of let it, let it happen and, and see how people respond. And if they don't love it, well, I'm sure we'll have a good time just between he and I telling stories. And if they do love it, then maybe this is something that we'll uh, move forward with. Are these your stories and his stories or are these stories like about Bette Midler? Well, it's, we haven't worked out the script yet and I imagine it'll be more our stories, but I, w- I would like to do research on certain songs, hear her stories and then tie in our stories to that. So if she says, I did this song because of this reason, I want to find what that connection is. And maybe there is one, maybe there isn't one, but I, I think you can always kind of find it if you want to. So we're going to work out the script, but at the moment it's kind of just been holiday madness. So we're waiting for, this week to kind of get through, hang out with family, hang out with the, the extra 15. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll really move forward on working out the script of it. So at this moment, we just have this, the set list, sort of the tentative set list. And then uh, we'll kind of figure how we bounce the dialogue back and forth. We have a, we have a banner. I think we have like a, a, a big banner we can show with all the information on it. And, and uh, it. highlighting it and, and, and pictures of you guys together and everything. Can we put up the banner? That'd be cool. Enjoy an evening of storytelling and song with Casey Lansdale and Alexander Rodriguez as they celebrate the extensive career of Bette Midler. Billboard magazine has called Casey's music infectious and mesmerizing, and the Los Angeles Times has hailed Alexander as a truly gifted singer. Come celebrate the Divine Miss M. Casey Lansdale and Alexander Rodriguez present Unsung Midler at Oscars Palm Springs. And once again, folks, uh, the show starts promptly at 7 because Casey's got to go to bed at 8. Not wrong. We've talked about her her (laughs) famous, uh, diligent uh, rock and roll, country singing, kick butt, punk rocker lifestyle. Uh, uh, So, yeah, get, get there early. And no, you're out the door at eight. She, yeah. She's she's done. done. Bed bed at eight thirty. I gotta hit the road. I got sleep. Sleep. It's to the get life. It. It's the life. Okay. So we had had a huge debate among myself and the the. I got a thousand people that work for me, you know, keeping all this machinery going. Uh, uh, the smooth, smooth operation I have. Um, the ladies in the group all love Sorry Ain't Enough. Nice. Uh, that is, that is an, almost like an anthem for them. I have, I have uh, uh, waitresses at, at the local diner I go to that I introduce that song to. And I hear them humming that song to me as they slam my food on the table. <laughs> so it's my work is done yeah it's uh and if you ever get to see the video uh uh, there isn't a man in the world who watches this video and doesn't see themselves as a stuffed animal the the (laughs) if the system works what can i say it's it's uh it's vicious it's vicious uh but the message is clear yes so we were going to do that we were going to do that because we were outvoted but then I remembered I own the show. Go on. And and uh, you had notified me that you have a, a new song, a, a song, River, mm-hmm. uh, new for you. Yeah. And you sing your version for it. And I said, I must have this. First off, gorgeous song. Gorgeous yeah. song. It's a beautiful uh, song. Uh, and, and just it's one of those that hits you in the feels 
Uh, at least this is where my feels are. Other people have them elsewhere, but that's where mine are. Uh, so beautiful. And, and, and you, you got it to us. So we can, is this like, I don't even want to ask because I know how this goes. Is this the debut? Would this be like a, I know it's, I know it's up on the YouTube on, 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 in, in Casey land. I'm sure Alexander has it and whatever. Yeah. As far I as uh, the debut. Yeah. Yeah. It, Cause we just put it out um, two days ago, I guess. So this is have it. it. You have it. This is, this is yours. <sighs> See, oh. See I, give, I give the people what they want. <laughs> well, let's not push it. I don't have any bacon. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> Cause the second of my two dreams that I always want to come true, sing the duet during the holiday show and i love to sing with the auto harp the auto harp you wouldn't happen to have an auto harp would you i happen to have one right over there it's just not tuned so another the auto harp is for another day another time another day Uh, the work you do, uh, and it goes unsung as, as a yogi, um, I, I'd like to talk about that a little bit because, again, it's not something that you get to advertise. I know you do those, uh, uh, you have a site where you do like five, what is it, five minutes with, with Casey? Yeah, just some fun things now and then. Yeah, some exercises and stuff that you post up, but um, you work with people all the time and have for years in helping them overcome not only physical pain, but a lot of times emotional pain, stress. It can just be the daily grind. It can be things that are just weighing heavy that they carry every day. And uh, uh, Casey, I, I got to give you kudos and I love to uh, point a spotlight on that because I don't think it gets enough coverage and all the things you do. We know you're the writer. You've got short stories coming out, uh, a, a podcast, uh, you know, uh, uh, books, you know, coming out with your dad, uh, all kinds of things going on. No one ever really focuses on this. Uh, yeah, it's uh, true. Because <clears throat> it's, it's not a thing. I guess in a, in a weird way, it's, 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 I don't know. It's, it's the thing I do for me. I do it all for me, but this is the thing I do for me in a different way. It's hard to explain. And yoga kind of came into my life because I was on the road constantly. So I couldn't travel in a way where I had a gym membership, excuse me. <clears throat> I couldn't travel with the gym membership because we were always in a different city, always in a different state. So I needed some kind of fitness routine that didn't involve equipment and that I could do anywhere and that would be available anywhere if I wanted to do it in a group setting. And yoga just became that outlet. You can always show up. You don't even need a mat if you're doing it on your own. You don't need anything except your body. And for a while it was running, but um, you know, running it for me is harder on the body. So between yoga and running, it was always one option. So when I needed to give my knees a break or my hips a break, yoga was always available. And then I started to, to just have that for my exercise, for my own personal well-being, And then it turned into sort of a fascination with, well, this made me feel so good. How can I give this to everybody else? And then that evolved into going to teacher training, which evolved into going to more teacher training and more workshops and just sort of letting it be a part of my life. And I think people don't bring it up as much because it's too different from the other artistic things in their mind. But to me, it, it all is hand in hand. The yoga, it helps you calm. It helps you um, center yourself before performance. There's a lot of stretches that are um, for the, the physical body that are um, opening up the jaw, that open the throat, and, and just sort of centering yourself and being prepared to be around other people, whether it's in, an, uh, in this kind of setting, whether it's in a stage performance setting, it just gives you a lot of tools. And I think that's part of why to me, it felt like a natural segue. And I wanted to share it and, and being able to teach and give that to people and see them like you and I talked about to see somebody kind of walk in and they're kind of bummed. And it's been, it's been a day. And, and then we go through this process and, and we kind of just 
peel those layers back, whether it's just through the physical movement or maybe from some kind of meditative work or um, reflective coaching style uh, dialogue. And you just sort of let people go through that and then they leave standing taller. And there's something really powerful about that more than anything else that I do. Okay, for a guy like me, for a guy like me, who my wife said, let's do yoga. And I said, mm -hmm. okay, let's do it. And then she pops in this DVD of this like ancient 90 year old dude on a rock in the middle of a river. And he's doing like one handed bench pressing yeah. uh, 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 stands with his legs out. One's behind his head and whatever. And that's lesson one. Yeah. For, for a guy like me, is there something that I can do just every day, just start off my day that yeah. can just loosen up some kinks, get my mind focused or whatever? I mean, I sit, I've been sitting in this chair so long, I've grown a third ass cheek. What can I do? Okay. I got two things for you. Okay. So one of my favorite classes that I teach is chair yoga. Chair so yoga. Chair yoga. And it's for people who either they have some physical disability that's either natural or something that occurred like a broken leg. So they can't do their normal mm -hmm. exercises. Mm -hmm. uh, or it's people who are seniors and, and they just don't have the same kind of mobility. Or it's people who sit in their desk all day and they need a little yep. 30 minute break. This is the clientele. So there are things that you can do. I mean, even simple things like sitting up tall, pulling the shoulders back and down, letting the hands be palm up and just relax the palms in the hands, right? And just start with a gentle neck stretch. Draw one ear to one shoulder. Keep the jaw relaxed. Oh. Tongue hang heavy in the mouth. Pull your right shoulder back and down. Uh, back wait, back and down. Back and down. There, there we go. There we go. Like that. Relax them both. Uh, how? Just relax. There it is. You can see it just happened. You relaxed it. Lift it up. Same thing, opposite side. And you'll notice one side is tighter, one side is less tight. Oh, yes. I thought the one side sucked. Oh. And, and see what you did. You naturally did this. You did a lean. So yeah. your whole body lean. And you're, you need your body to stay still. Uh, straight. And take the movement from the, the upper part. Oh. So. And you're doing yoga. Oh, okay. You know, these are the kinds of things. Even little cat cows, if you flip your palms down on the tops of the thighs, you reach the heart forward, you lift the head, you round the spine, you scoop out the belly. So you take that movement and articulate the movement from the spine. Okay, so let's go. Of, let's do this one. Yeah. Let's do this. You, you went too fast for my, uh, I, was, I was panicking. Halfway through, mm -hmm. I panicked. So, okay. So I put hands where? Palms face down on tops of the thighs. On tops of the thighs, my right. own thighs. Yes. And now okay. you reach your heart forward. And Reach pull my heart forward. back and down and lift the chin. Oh. Yeah. Now exhale, round, let the hands glide down the thighs, let the chin drop down to the chest, round the spine, scoop out the belly. So you need to drop your chin to your chest. But I can't see you if I do that. That's okay. Uh, okay. And then inhale, lift, squeeze, and then exhale, round, scoop out the belly. And you start to take that, that starts to, synovial fluid starts to go up and down your spine. And what, if, start I, what if I'm out of synovial fluid? Then we have bigger problems. <laughs> okay. Can and I so get that when I yell at the old lady at your, uh, Walmart? Can I get synovial? You've got yeah. to ask the synovial fluid. But those, I mean, that's something, that's yoga. That's a cat cow. You know, that's a very right. natural motion. When you're in bed, you can yeah. do the same things. You can draw... You can draw a knee up to the chest. You know, if this is the knees, you're, you're on your back, you're in bed, you draw a knee up to chest, you draw a knee up to chest, you let one leg go long, you let the other knee go out, you bring it out, you switch it out, knee goes out. I mean, you, you're you doing yoga. And, and what's important, the movement is important and the, the physical placement, but that kind of comes as you train it because the body is so used to holding as you've been doing it that it yeah. takes a while to kind of let it relax. What's more important is linking the breath. So if any time that you're going to in extend and any time you're going to round or you're going to bring a leg long or you're going to bring a leg back to the chest, you, extensions are inhales and 
um, exhales are releases. So if you're gonna if you're in a forward fold and you're gonna swoop your arms out up overhead and come into standing, you inhale and then you exhale, hands at heart. Inhale. All the way over, reach, 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 drop those shoulders down, hand down to heart. And you just do that a time or two. And that's it. You've yoga. And, and if you do it for two to five minutes in the morning, you feel better throughout the day. It's a true story. Science. It's, yeah, it's in the Bible. It's fact. You can't argue <laughs> with the Bible. It's, it's on the Google. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there. Um, so, so and sorry, I could talk, I could talk about this. Yeah, for a long no, that's time. that's this is all very cool stuff and stuff people just don't know about you, or if they know it's in like a quick Wikipedia thing and does yoga, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I've known uh, you know that you've done this for a long, long time, and we've talked about your passion for uh, uh, though it's something you bring to your own personal life. The I don't know. It's just so. Is joy such an easy word? But I, I can't think of any other. The joy you get from watching other people and knowing that you help them and that their day is better, and, right. and maybe they carry a little less of whatever. Because uh, um, it's it kind of the difference is because I want to get something completely wrong before we leave. Uh, the difference is uh, I've done physical therapy mm. uh, for damage I've done to myself. Um, and, and that's always been helpful in a lot of the muscle stretching and rebuilding of the, the whatever. Um, but mm -hmm. yoga seems to do that, mm -hmm. but bring a, a meditation, a concentration, a, a building of confidence. Yeah. It's PT with a lot of breath work. Okay. And, and there's things, you know, if like the video you're talking about with the yogi master guy, like. If that's what's upsetting is we some, someone sees that and they go, oh, I can't do that. So I can't do yoga. And it's like, no, we, we just did it. We just did yoga. That's it. So you, you have to find the thing. And again, maybe you try it all and yoga just isn't for you. I accept that. Okay. But there are so many styles of yoga and there are so many teachers that teach the styles of yoga. So you may take with five teachers that you don't like and then take with the sixth teacher. And then that's, that's the one that speaks to you. But isn't that the way with anything? Didn't yeah. you go through high school and your 10th grade math teacher sucked and you didn't do well in math that year? Mm -hmm. And then you hated math. And then by your senior year, you're like, I like this teacher. And then math starts clicking for you. So that's, All except that's for the math clicking for you thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was just, that's a goner. That was out. Uh, now this is, this is the big goodbye. Other than the Christmas show thing that we're doing on TMV Cafe. Right. But this is the good big goodbye okay. for an, another year. Wow. For another year before we come back for the third annual Funky Wear Pig, Casey Lansdale, double duet auto harp <laughs> annual holiday special. I got to tell you, it's going to be here before we know it. I know. Didn't it seem like yesterday for the first one? Oh my goodness. I, it's going to be here before we know it. And we're going to be having the same conversation. How is this possible? <laughs> I'm just always shocked you come back. <laughs> always shocked. I, hey, I, just, I had fun. Well, you, you are a fun person to be with. So Aww, make good. sure you tell give them. You tell them. Tell them. Tell the family. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the raffle winners or the family? All of them. They should know. <laughs> they were very well behaved. Well, I'm hiding in the garage. This is the garage is my office. Oh, gotcha. I gotcha. So been converted into the studio, both musical and yoga. And so this is my domain. No one is allowed to enter. I got when you. I'm here. I was gonna say they've been very well it, behaved. They've been helps. I was waiting for people to reach across tables to get butter, you know, things like that, you know, butts and faces as you're trying to talk. That is the typical, and I considered it, and I thought, you know what? I'm not going to do that to the people. I'm going to just hide <laughs> outside. <laughs> so, well, thank you very much for that, and and thank you so much for for just putting it up uh, again, knocking it out of the park. The laughter, uh, uh, the heartfelt stuff you always share, and 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 the music, and thank Alexander too. I will. He's a lot of fun. And you, you know what? You'll have to have him on one day. I would love to. I would love to, because you know what the first thing he'll do with me is? The duet. Yeah. 100%. He will, 
She Listen, was. There, there's there's nobody better. You you'll enjoy him a lot. He's he's funny. He's talented. He's he's uh, he's a great guest. Well, very very groovy. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, behave. I'll try. <laughs> and we will see you in exactly probably 12 minutes. Okay. <laughs> so, see you. Happy then. holidays, everybody. Singer songwriter, actress, author. Swing by CaseyLansdale.com to enjoy her music, share her TV and movie projects, and dive into her latest publications. CaseyLansdale.com. You can also find Casey on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and most other social media outlets. Are you ready, Piggy Petters? Then let's put the needle to the record. Christmas. They're cutting down trees, they're putting up reindeer, singing songs of joy and peace. Oh, I wish I had a river I could skate away on. But it don't snow here, it stays pretty green. I'm gonna make a lot of money, then I'm gonna quit this crazy scene. Oh, I wish I had a river skate away on I wish I had a river so long I would teach my feet to fly oh, I wish I had a river I could skate
Like a clock on a wall that said ding ding dong, it's time to check the monkey clock. You know the batteries in the monkey clock died long ago, so when I look up and I see that the time is 10 after 12, that is the correct time. Because one does not argue with monkey clock. Roinks in the... I have to keep it quiet. I forgot that we have the staff of 1000 staying with us over the holidays. I thought it'd be a cool bonding experience. Uh, I knitted them all one giant sleeping bag for Christmas. And uh, they're all just so adorable when they don't make noise and, and they just lay there. I like that. Uh, the boy childs are not with them. They're fulfilling their own traditional Christmas uh, duties. They like to challenge old ladies to shovel fights outside of Walmart. I am so proud of my boys. They're currently 18 and two. Um, and for Christmas, I just, I, I always just give them bail money. But um, I am quietly basking in the glow of the underwear scented candle. I am drinking Zima flavored coffee out of my Misty Blues coffee cup. And we've got some business to take care of, don't we? Hugs and roinks to our special guest. Uh, no, you know what? When you, when you, when you do the second annual holiday special and commit to all the others, you are more than just a special guest. You are an official partner in crime. And that's how I think of you, Casey Lansdale. I love when you're on the show. You, you, you bring the laughter and, and, and the stories and the warmth. And, and of course that voice, oh, the songs and the music you bring. I love it. I love it. And, and you inspire. You inspire. Uh, uh, you know that thing you did with the 15 raffle winners off your website and you invited them out for the holidays? Uh, I'm not saying I'm overly competitive, but I'm going to go 16. 16 random, lucky, funky wear pig subscribers. One more than what you picked from your fans. And uh, pack your bags, piggy petters, because I am bringing you out to Casey's house next week. Be ready. Casey, you're welcome. High fives and disco hut bumps to the Magic Farmers Incorporated, Goat Boy, Ivan November Slasher Malone, President James K. Polk, McCoy, and Miss Karen for another successful year of keeping those Lansdales in line. You know, every episode, we make sure to thank the uh, Magic Farmers Incorporated for bringing the comedy. And uh, I wanted to pick uh, one person out of the pile, if I could, Mr. Jeff Brown. Uh, he has been doing this year after year after year, showing up for work, and we're not quite sure why, uh, but we're glad he does. And uh, Jeff has that musical knack, so he, he writes a lot of the music for J.J. Glamour. Um, and we wanted to give him a special uh, kudos just for his longevity. But also, he finally got to show off in this episode his long-running collection of prison songs. So, I raise a frothy mug to you, my goodly friend. Oh, make sure you uh, head on over to TMV Cafe Radio. For the first time in a decade, we're going to go back to where it began, going old school with the Funky Wear Pig radio show. Uh, it's going to be another holiday special with Casey joining us. That woman cannot be contained to just one show. No, no, no. Um, it uh, drops on Christmas Day at noon, Funky Wear Pig time, East Coast. That's uh, 9 o'clock, uh, Casey Lansdale west coast and uh if if you happen uh to miss it tmv cafe is going to run it all weekend long so tmvcafe.com okay i gotta wrap this up if santa swings by and i'm still awake he will not leave any presents santa don't play so um let me find him there he there he is, our glorious musical director, J.J. Glamour. J.J., J.J., what a magical show. What a holiday special. And you know why it was both magical and special? Yeah, you, you, man. So let's do what J.J. do.
let's uh, put the needle to the record. Let's throw those pants in the air like we just don't care. And if you would, good sir, play us out and uh, make it something funky. Behave out there, piggy petters. <laughs> easier if they just sold peyote out of a vending machine. <laughs>